sodium fluoride, sodium silica fluoride, and fluorosilic acid, all used in dental offices, toothpaste, and water fluoridation, are toxic waste substances created from the creation processes in the fertilizer, steel, nuclear, and aluminum industries. These artificial substances should not be confused with the natural occurring fluoride element. Contrary to popular belief, fluoride used in fluoridation practices is not a pharmaceutical grade substance, but instead industrial toxic waste. When these industries were faced with the problem of how to legally dispose of the excessive amount of toxic waste they were producing, Alcoa, the Aluminum Company of America, the largest producer of fluoride at the time, hired the services of scientist Gerald J. Cox to discover whether fluoride could be beneficial for preventing tooth decay. Gerald Cox, with vested interest, concluded that since the natural fluoride element can help in preventing tooth decay, these poisonous chemicals can also. After the release of Cox's claims, the fluoride waste these industries produced began being trapped in the smokestacks of the factories, collected, put into barrels, and sold to municipalities to add to their drinking water. Before these industries were trapping fluoride emissions, the fluoride pollution was scorching vegetation, killing crops, and crippling livestock. Today, this very same toxic chemical is ingested by millions each day through public water supplies. While these industries solved their waste problems and began profiting, communities are now ingesting an extremely toxic chemical. Fluoride is also responsible for much more than just tooth decay. Dental fluorosis is a tooth condition caused by fluoride. Fluoride is the only contributor in the creation of dental fluorosis. Dental fluorosis shows up as white or brown spots on the teeth and can also break away and pit at the enamel. Dental fluorosis is typically caused by fluoride exposed to the teeth between birth up to the age of eight. As a result of the use of fluoride, according to the CDC, dental fluorosis is found in 32% of American children. In fact, the effect fluoride can have on developing teeth is so immense that the American Dental Association and Center for Disease Control both state that parents should not be using fluoridated water for their baby's drinking water or formula. Those with evidence of dental fluorosis can also count on having too much fluoride in other areas of the body as well. Skeletal fluorosis is also common when the bones become overfluoridated. Having too much fluoride in the body poses risks to the organs and greatly increases the rate of cancer. The fluoride story starts in 1939, when Alcoa, the Aluminum Company of America, then the world's largest producer of sodium fluoride, and the Dow Chemical Company transferred its technology to Germany. At the end of World War II, the U.S. government sent Elliot Perkins, a research worker in chemistry, biochemistry, physiology, and pathology, to take over the chemical plants in Germany. Perkins quickly learned from the German scientists that they had devised a scheme during World War II using fluoride to medicate water in order to mind control the populations of cities they had taken over. It was found that fluoridation caused slight damage to a specific part of the brain in neurotransmitters, making it more difficult for the person affected to defend his freedom, causing the individual to become more docile towards authority. Hitler's eugenics program was no secret to anyone. The CIA quickly picked up where he left off, making the chemical control of an entire nation a main part of their research. As research completed by chemist Charles E. Perkins shows, any person who drinks artificially fluoridated water for a period of one year or more will never be the same person mentally or physically.
you have to begin to look at things for what they truly are. When we truly look at fluoride, we find that fluoride science was bought and paid for by the companies who were producing the most of it. It was a way for them to dispose of the toxic waste while profiting. Fluoride does absolutely nothing to prevent tooth decay. Not only does fluoride cause issues for the teeth and mental health, but is highly linked and sometimes the direct cause of cancer, kidney disease, thyroid issues, bone disease, arthritis, immune system deficiencies, and the lowering of IQ. In fact, 18 separate human studies have been completed in China, India, Iran, and Mexico that all conclude fluoride is the direct cause of lowering IQ. When it comes to drinking water, it can be quite difficult to avoid fluoride at times as it is found in the majority of bottled water as well. Find out if your city water is fluoridated or not. If your city is not fluoridated, drinking tap water versus bottled water will allow you to avoid the fluoride. But this still isn't ideal as tap water still contains chlorine and other chemicals that aren't good for the body. The ideal situation is to purchase a water filtration system that filters out both chlorine and fluoride. Some better than others, but some also more expensive than others. Make sure the filter is capable of filtering out fluoride. In terms of toothpaste, there are many types of toothpaste out there that do not contain fluoride. Next time you are at the store, check out the various natural brands that do not contain fluoride. You can also use baking soda to brush your teeth instead of toothpaste. At the end of the day, fluoride is so heavily defended by people and some professionals because they are simply going by what they have been taught. They assume that there is actual evidence to show that fluoride is good for us and that it's safe to use. This is the same mentality we have taken towards many other things in our current world. Gently approach your dentist with this information as well. Most professionals have no intention of harming anyone, they are only practicing what they have been taught. Many dentists have quickly changed their minds about fluoride once they have learned the truth about it. Finally, really think about why those in charge, who know full well what this chemical does, are putting it in our water. Use this same questioning when looking at other deceptions we have been fed. We consume it every day with the reassurance from our health authorities that it is doing us good. The truth is fluoride is a poison and adding it to our drinking water is an evolving social experiment started 40 years ago. Now one of the world's top fluoride experts has issued a grim warning about what it could be doing to our health and that of unborn children. Yet as Frank Pangello reports, you'll get a different spin from dentists and health bureaucrats. We consider that as a poison. Why should a poison be in drinking water? The poison is fluoride. It's there because government health bureaucrats and dentists tell us it's for our common good, for reducing tooth decay and at levels which won't harm you. That doesn't wash with Professor A.K. Shashila. They should realise it's the poisonous substance. It doesn't promote health. It is, it is a disease-causing agent, and the fluoridation should be stopped as early as possible. Professor Shashila is one of the world's leading experts on fluoride. Her own extensive research, along with 70 years of data in India, backs up what she's saying and it's most disturbing. I would consider the, the, a pregnant mother taking fluoride contaminated products, I'm using the word products, which includes water, toothpaste, black tea, uh, uh, processed food products which has fluoride. Any liquid? Any contain? liquid, anything. At a, where her urinary fluoride is high, she is going to cause a lot of damage to the fetus, the growing embryo, the infant which is going to be born. The American Dental Association warns against using fluoridated water to mix baby formula. Not so here. They don't read, they are not aware, they don't update themselves, they don't do any research. So we are in a serious problem. Professor Shashila says exposure to fluoride could also be the cause of many ills like neck, shoulder and joint pains, which may be misdiagnosed by doctors. 
she routinely does urine tests to check fluoride levels in her patients. Remove the fluoride ingestion, starting from toothpaste, black tea, uh, fluoridated water, whatever, and you bring down the urinary fluoride to normal limits, the patient recovers. Fluoride is also used as a preservative and also lurks in many products we consume. But apart from toothpaste, it's not listed on labels. So it is coming into one's body through many sources and you are not aware of it. The fluoride that goes into our drinking water is toxic waste from the production of fertiliser. For maybe a hundred years, the phosphate fertiliser industry put out two very, very poisonous gases into the environment, hydrogen fluoride and silicon tetrafluoride. Eventually they were required to capture those and they did it with a wet spray, water, and that water converts these two very toxic gases into hexafluorosilicic acid. And it's this scrubbing liquor, which is about 25% strong, is put into tanker trucks, driven around the country, and added to our drinking water. Here's what's in the mix made in Australia. A sickening cocktail of heavy metals like arsenic, barium, beryllium, cadmium, lead, mercury, and on it goes. And in much higher concentrations than is allowed for lead and arsenic. Why should you make people drink a poisoned water? Well, it's forced medication for the masses. And there are more than 1,000 doctors and scientists around the world who, like Professor Shashila, condemn what's going on. The problem with adding medicine to water is an obvious one of consent, that people can't give their informed consent, which is a basic of medical ethics. Fluoride is about to be added to Mount Gambier's water from the Blue Lake. Alex Young is livid. He's collected a petition of more than 6,000 signatures against the move, or a quarter of the town, which has been ignored by the state government. The issue of fluoridation has largely been um, ignored by the government. In not terms they want to push it, but in terms of allowing the community to have a say in the matter, we just they simply just ignore us. And I am and the rest of the group here are just amazed at the level of ignorance shown on this matter. We wanted to talk to someone in SA Health about the issue. Instead, we got a written statement which didn't address our questions directly. It claims Mount Gambier children have 78% more tooth decay than those in Adelaide who drink fluoridated water, and that it's considered safe and used in other developed countries like the USA, UK and Canada. Well, there aren't many more on that list, as anti-fluoride campaigner Professor Paul Connett points out. Most European countries do not fluoridate. Austria, Belgium, the Netherlands, France, Germany, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Iceland, Italy, Greece, Portugal. The overwhelming number of countries in the world do not fluoridate and guess what? Their teeth are just as good, if not better, than ours. It aggravates dental decay. The tooth gets pitted, perforated, it gets chipped off, it breaks, and also at a much younger age, the people will become edentulous, means they will lose their teeth. The anti-fluoride movement says while there's ample evidence to support what they're saying, governments still refuse to listen or fund research to study the impact it has on health. The real culprit here is these um, bureaucrats who are spinning the information before it gets to the, the, the decision makers. And that's what's outraged. We expect, I think, politicians to spin, but we shouldn't expect civil servants to spin. A mistake? Yes, of course.